Well, it happens every decade after the census. We're referring to drawing a new legislative map. But what does what goes into that task? ABC News Channel 20, Demetria Connor is live tonight in studio with more on media session held today to break down this complex process. Demetria. Jerry, it's not as simple as taking a pen and notepad and drawing a map of Illinois. There are several formulas used to determine how these congressional districts will be drawn. For example, mappers can draw maps using political numbers. There's a county-by-county county option, or mappers could start with minority districts and build a map around those areas. According to preliminary census data, Hispanics are now the largest minority group in the state. How many districts will be created to reflect that increase is the question. But redistricting mapper Ed Marshall says it should be all about crunching the numbers and analyzing the data. But he says that's not everyone's main interest. And that's why you see very little movement across the decade in a lot of these districts. Because they're drawn to, you know, keep not a lot of change. People like the status quo. The Voting Rights Act of 2011 still awaits the governor's signature. The bill requires those who draw the map to look at creation of crossover, influence, and coalition districts. Officials say it also calls for public hearings. Once the state gets the official census data in April, it will only take two to three weeks to draw the map. But the battle only heats up then. Legislatures have until June 30th to pass a new map that many hope is fair and represents the people of Illinois. Jerry, back to you. Demetria, thank you very much. Well, of course, state constitutional and federal guidelines must be met in drawing the new map. If legislators fail to meet the June 30th deadline, a commission will be formed with an August 10th date to file a plan with the Secretary of State. And lawmakers on both sides wasted no time today sharing their thoughts about this spending plan. News Channel at 9's Demetria Connor caught up with some of them and brings us their reactions. When it comes to job creation, paying the bills, and a commitment to workers' comp reform, most lawmakers liked what they heard, but there were disappointments. That <clears throat> is a little hard to swallow. State Senator Larry Bumke says borrowing for operational expenses and paying it off in the future has to stop. And what troubles him most is the structure of the nearly $9 billion borrowing plan. It would be like someone putting their house payment on their credit card. House Minority Leader Tom Crawl says the debt cycle continues with the governor's proposed $1.7 billion spending increase. It's the same old song, and it's uh, that part is, is very troubling. On the governor's new approach of budgeting for results, Chicago Democrat Kwame Raul says that's too general of a term, and he wonders what that will mean in the long run for areas that are already getting shortchanged. Who's the police of all that? Who is making the determination? Of, of what is worthy and what is not. Some lawmakers say there were several important issues Quinn did not touch on, like the pension problem and health care for retirees. And many wanted more budget specifics and examples of how and where the governor plans to cut. Greater detail about some of the ways we're going to rein in spending and control spending state government, the public would have liked to have heard that. But this is only a proposal and the start of what lawmakers say is a long budgeting process that will last until the end of May when the budget is finalized. At the state capitol, Demetria Connor, News Channel at 9 on Fox, Illinois. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marianne Manco. Charges of discrimination are now surrounding a proposal in the Illinois legislature. Tonight, News Channel at 9's Demetria Connor has more on the bill that would require drug testing for welfare recipients. Local NAACP members have a bone to pick with Representative Adam Brown. The Decatur Republican is co-sponsoring legislation to require random substance abuse testing for the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program. We see it as another form of racial profiling. We feel that it's unconstitutional. And we, we're concerned the fact that they're singling out our community for this drug testing. It's House Bill 11, and Brown says the drug testing would apply to welfare recipients. He says if blue-collar workers have to undergo testing, then people who receive state or federal benefits should too. I think it's only fair that uh, either you drug test on both ends of it, or you make uh, drug testing non-existent for all folks. DHS already requires its caseworkers to screen candidate recipients. 
Opponents want to know how the state will foot the bill for testing. Research shows that it costs between $25 to $76 to test each individual. Even though the bill has not made it out of committee, Representative Jahan Gordon of the 92nd District says this has been an ongoing issue. The Peoria Democrat says the dilemma is legislation is now in the works along with a hole in the DHS's budget. So it's something that I think that we need to listen to, but is it necessarily something that we need to be implementing at this point in time? And the NAACP hopes the committee remembers the people behind the well welfare check. And not only the parents suffer, but the kids suffer, and that's our bigger concern. At the state capitol, Demetria Connor, News Channel at 9 on Fox, Illinois. Now, the Shriver Center on Poverty Law also opposes this legislation. Now, this bill could be discussed in a House committee as early as next week. It's unclear whether or not the uh, support would exist to actually bring it to the House floor for a vote. Steal, Jerry, now! Steal, Jerry, now! The message is clear. I hope that we get the right to carry. Supporters say the state is closer than ever to seeing that happen. <laughs> Groups such as the Women of Our Gold of Illinois and the Rifle Association can deliver letters to Governor Quinn's office demanding he support House Bill 148. Self-defense is a basic human right. And that right is being respected all across this nation, but it's not respected here in the state of Illinois. There's an old saying, if you outlaw guns, only the outlaws will have guns. Opponents say the concern is not owning a gun, but carrying it on the street. Representative Mary Flowers is one of two lawmakers against this bill. Concealed carry has not been proven to make you any safer. Concealed weapons is not the only issue at hand. Some gun owners are concerned their identities may be exposed. The decision to make the names of registered gun owners public is up in the air. The Attorney General's office wants to make that public, but the Illinois State Police wants to keep it private. Now, these supporters were willing to show me their identification cards, but that may not be the case for everyone. It's like putting a sign on the front of your house saying, I don't have a gun or I do have a gun, and nobody needs to know. Pushing to keep a lock on their identity while fighting for their right to carry a gun. And speaking of fraud, current Illinois link card holders may soon have to get a new food stamp card with their photo right on the front of it. News Channel at 9's Demetria Connor has more tonight on legislation that is supposed to tighten the belt on food stamp fraud. There was heated debate Tuesday as House Bill 161 made its way through the House chamber. In the spirit of brotherhood, to take this bill out of the record. This bill will require those receiving food stamp benefits or cash to have their picture on their link card. That means replacing tens of thousands of current cardholders. This is a hot button issue that prompted a yelling match between some lawmakers. So if you're not letting them respond, so Mr. Excuse me, excuse me. Even with opposition, the bill passed in the House 64 to 48. Representative Chapin Rose of Muhammad is the chief sponsor of this bill and says he doesn't know what all the fuss is about. I mean, I think it's common sense to say that putting a photo on a card can cut down on fraud. Maybe we find out that in the process that, it, you know, the, the cost is not worth, you know, the, the amount of fraud you can cut down. But maybe we find out it'll be relatively cheap. There will be a substantial cost to the Department of Human Services. About two-thirds of the 600,000 monthly cars are mailed. This would place a major burden on the department and result in new costs for staff and equipment. Additional equipment would have to be installed in each local office, including cameras, software, and printers. The car production and equipment would cost in the range of two to four million dollars. The bill now goes to the Senate floor for vote. If it passes, DHS will have six months to study this issue and report its findings to the General Assembly. Reporting at the Capitol, Dimitri O'Connor for News Channel at 9 on Fox, Illinois. The group Make Wall Street Pay Illinois has a clear name and message that members hope will reach these lawmakers in the House and in the Senate and ultimately the governor's desk. The Chicago-based group rallied outside of the Capitol Tuesday and asking Governor Quinn and lawmakers to make Wall Street and big banks pay Illinois millions it owes the state and to stop interest rate swaps. 
The group says Illinois will lose over $600 million in much-needed revenue for vital services unless state leaders act to save it. We don't need to cut spending. We need to find the revenue, and there is revenue out there to be found. And so we found it. There are pockets where it's being, you know, readjusted, and we're here to take that, take back that money that should have been in the right place anyway. Representative William Davis of Cook County urged Senate and House leaders to put a decoupling bill on the table, allowing lawmakers to vote on state tax determinations from federal bonus depreciation. The group is pushing for two House bills similar to this issue. The House Bill 1820 forces banks to pay a $500 fee every time it sells a foreclosed property. And House Bill 1109 makes it possible for cities and towns to fine banks for run-down foreclosed property. The group is running out of time, but members hope that lawmakers will vote on these bills before the current session wraps up. At the Capitol, Demetria Connor, ABC News Channel. Thousands of people in Illinois receive state assistance through a variety of programs. Now one particular program is under scrutiny in the state legislature. A pending bill would require drug testing before someone receives aid. News Channel at 9's Demetria Connor is here with both sides of the issue. Demetria? When it comes to House Bill 11, there are strong feelings on both sides. Supporters believe the legislation could cut fraud in a state assistance program, while those opposed say the cost would be a burden and an invasion of privacy for those families needing help. I don't think that's fair. Springfield resident Maggie Whitted has received government assistance for more than a decade. She's a recovering drug addict who's been clean for five years. She admits to making a lot of mistakes in her life, but says she shouldn't be punished by the state for it. Just because you turn out to be an addict doesn't mean that you should be denied help. She's talking about House Bill 11. This bill would require substance abuse testing, including random testing, as a condition for aid under the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF program. House Bill 11 says any applicant or recipient who tests positive will be ineligible for TANF benefits for a year and may be required to enter a substance abuse program. I don't believe that taxpayer money should be go going to drug addicts. Uh, openly. Bill co-sponsor Adam Brown says he's trying to cut out fraud and abuse in the system. A DHS spokeswoman says there's no data to support the fraud accusation. She declined an on-camera interview, but Sarah Solano released this statement. This type of legislation violates the Fourth Amendment because testing is not based on probable cause and would qualify as unreasonable search and seizure. It also would be incredibly costly to implement during one of the toughest economic times in the history of our state. One test can run from $15 to $45, and total cost estimates for DHS is about $7 million. But when it says the greatest cost will fall on the families that may end up with no cash assistance, rehabilitation, and a number of services. Because a lot of us have children and and we have families that we need to, you know, feed and support. House Bill 11 would not apply to those 65 or older or to a resident of a facility licensed under the Nursing Home Care Act. But as of March of this year, there were about 104,000 TANF recipients statewide. 4,300 of them are in our 13-county viewing area, and nearly 2,000 TANF recipients are right here in Sangamon County. Those folks staying into the drug to the system are drug tested, those folks receiving from the system should also be drug tested. DHS already has an extensive screening process. If it's found a recipient has a substance abuse problem, there is a system in place that offers appropriate care, while still allowing that person to receive assistance. A recipient may become ineligible for services if they don't abide by the guidelines set forth in their individual plan. Brown says it's still not enough, but Whitted and DHS hope lawmakers won't agree. If this bill passes, the substance abuse testing will start as a pilot program in at least three counties and then implement it statewide. DHS says those counties have not been identified yet. Right now, House Bill 11 is in committee, and this legislative session wraps up at the end of May. So, Liz, it will be interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks.
Yes, I will. Thanks, Demetria. Right now, there's a similar bill in the Florida legislature. And in Wisconsin, this type of legislation has been ruled unconstitutional. Thousands of people in Illinois receive state assistance through a variety of programs. But one program is under scrutiny by some state lawmakers. So they've introduced a bill that would require drug testing before someone receives aid. ABC News Channel 20, Demetria Connor has more. I don't think that's fair. Springfield resident Maggie Whitted has received government assistance for more than a decade. She's a recovering drug addict who's been clean for five years. She admits to making a lot of mistakes in her life, but says she shouldn't be punished by the state for it. Just because you turn out to be an addict doesn't mean that she should be denied help. She's talking about House Bill 11. This bill would require substance abuse testing, including random testing, as a condition for aid under the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF program. House Bill 11 says any applicant or recipient who tests positive will be ineligible for TANF benefits for a year and may be required to enter a substance abuse program. I don't believe that taxpayer money should be go going to drug addicts. Uh, openly. Bill co-sponsor Adam Brown says he's trying to cut out fraud and abuse in the system. A DHS spokeswoman says there's no data to support the fraud accusation. She declined an on-camera interview, but Stacey Solano released this statement. This type of legislation violates the Fourth Amendment because testing is not based on probable cause and would qualify as unreasonable search and seizure. It also would be incredibly costly to implement during one of the toughest economic times in the history of our state. One test can run from $15 to $45, and total cost estimates for DHS is about $7 million. But when it says the greatest cost will fall on the families that may end up with no cash assistance, rehabilitation, and a number of services. Because a lot of us have children and and we have families that we need to, you know, feed and support. House Bill 11 would not apply to those 65 or older or to a resident of a facility licensed under the Nursing Home Care Act. But as of March of this year, there were about 104,000 TANF recipients statewide. 4,300 of them are in our 13-county viewing area, and nearly 2,000 TANF recipients are right here in Sangamon County. Those folks staying into the drug to the system or drug tested, those folks receiving from the system should also be drug tested. DHS already has an extensive screening process. If it's found a recipient has a substance abuse problem, there is a system in place that offers appropriate care while still allowing that person to receive assistance. A recipient may become ineligible for services if they don't abide by the guidelines set forth in their individual plan. Brown says it's still not enough, but Whitted and DHS hope lawmakers won't agree. In Springfield, Demetria O'Connor, ABC News Channel 20. Now, if this bill passes, the substance abuse testing will start as a pilot program in at least three counties. It will then be implemented statewide. DHS says those counties have not yet been identified. Right now, the bill is still in committee. The legislative session wraps up at the end of May. When you drive by and see all those signs, know that they are part of the largest construction program in our state's history. In fact, that program is now the subject of a court battle before the Illinois Supreme Court, and the legal challenge to the Capitol Bill is causing widespread uncertainty as many of the projects have not started. News Channel at 9's Demetria Connor is here with a closer look. The Capitol Bill was signed into law in July of 2009. Lawmakers approved this nearly $30 billion plan to repair roads, bridges, and infrastructure across the state. Some repairs are complete, but there are still projects in our area that haven't even started. Now a recent court ruling has the bill in limbo, and many are asking, where's the money? We have not received that money yet. When it comes to some Capitol Bill projects in the capital city, nothing has happened since 2009. And the waiting game is on for the Prairie Capital Convention Center, the YMCA, and the University of Illinois at Springfield. We won't be able to start the project without the money. UIS is waiting on $4 million from the state to renovate the public safety building. Interim Chancellor Harry Berman says the current structure is old and crowded. Now we have 1,100 students. We have a much larger police force and we need a modern facility. The Capitol Bill funds have to be reappropriated each year in a new bill, but an appellate court's ruling in January struck down the revenue stream of the bill, saying it violated the single subject rule. Yes, that's quite a wrinkle. Berman hopes the state Supreme Court will overturn that ruling because if not, he says, the university may never see the money. The need is there, 
and it is our uh, highest uh, priority. We thought we had it uh, achieved, but it hasn't worked out that way. Prairie Capital Convention Center General Manager Brian Oak says he has to get the ball rolling on a $16 million renovation project, even without the state's commitment of $4 million. He says no major upgrades have taken place since 1979. So we're going to start 10 to $12 million worth of those projects, which will include lower level meeting room renovations, a renovation of our existing bathrooms and concession stands. The center is one of 11 across Illinois included in the Capitol bill. Oak says it won't see any state dollars until bonding starts again. Our lobby expansion and addition of main hall bathrooms are kind of on hold until we find out what happens with this Capitol plan. Walls are going up at the YMCA's new building across from Rotary Park on the west side of Springfield, despite not having the $200,000 from the state. Now, this construction project was jump-started with private funds. In the meantime, others are still waiting to hear from the court. We thought that would have occurred before now. State Senator Larry Bumke of Sprinkle says the holdup is the video poker dispute. Eighty communities have said they want no part of open gambling on video poker machines. The problem is the state was counting on video gaming to provide a big chunk of change for the capital plan. Bumke says lawmakers are now preparing for alternative revenue sources. There are a number of projects out there that have not been completed, uh, organizations and communities have not gotten their money. And there are a number of projects in our viewing area, including McCoupin, Christian, Montgomery, Logan, and Macon counties. All are hoping for a positive outcome this legislative session, but the only thing left to do is wait. On a positive note, IDOT jump-started about a dozen projects in our viewing area last year. A spokesman tells News Channel at 9 that IDOT continues to move forward with all construction projects as planned, including more than $1 billion of work this construction season. Also, according to a school official, nearly $8 million has been released from the state to the Illinois School for the Deaf in Jacksonville for two projects including new sprinklers and bathrooms in the dorms and a new roof on the main administrative building. So some good news for them, but others still have their hands out. Mary Ann, back to you. All right, Petria, thanks so much. And lawmakers do hope that the high court will rule within the next month so they can make headway on that capital bill. Once the court's decision is rendered, it could take about a year before bonding continues. Well, it wasn't your typical Sunday service at Abundant Faith Christian Center today when a local educator delivered an inspirational message to area youth. ABC News Channel 20 Demetria Connor is live in the studio with more on the principal who's taking his message beyond school walls. Most students wouldn't expect to see their principal in the pulpit on Sunday morning, but about 100 Springfield Public School District students were in for a surprise and some inspiration when Lansier Principal Artie Daw showed up at Abundant Faith Christian Center to deliver.